Welcome back guys. Did I actually get to make a fun list because it's the top 10 best WWE Championship matches. So you specifically stipulated not the Universal, not World Heavyweight, not must be the WWE or I include the WWF of course as well because I mean if you just don't include that then it's half the matches on you wouldn't be a thing. So WWF or WWE World Championship. So this was a fun one to do and of course I'm going to miss some of your favorite matches out. So these are a combination of some highly rated matches plus some of my favorites. So let's get straight into it. Number 10 is Bret Hart versus Owen Hart in a cage match at SummerSlam 1994. Now for my money this is two things. This is the best cage match WWE has ever had, as well as the best siblings go to war match WWE has ever had. Yes, we've seen the Hardys, didn't quite work out. Yes, we've seen, well, back then it was Stardust and Goldust, didn't quite work out. Now, the match in AEW was phenomenal, but I my, my list is based purely on WWE. So for my money, this match had all the drama. It had bread kicking the leg out of the leg and just everything. Two of the best technical wrestlers to ever lace up a pair of boots. And this was just absolute masterclass. Number nine is AJ Styles versus John Cena at I believe it was Royal Rumble 2017. So this was in a time, a time in John Cena's life where he had banger of the banger of the banger match. And this was, I believe, a trilogy of matches they had, but this was by far the best one the two of them had. AJ Styles and John Cena had just phenomenal chemistry. But then again, you put AJ Styles in the ring with just about anybody, you're going to get a good match. Then you put in a guy that can work and tell the story like John Cena can, and you know it's just going to be an absolute banger. Number eight is Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston at WrestleMania 35. So WrestleMania 35 had, it was WrestleMania, yes, it was WrestleMania 35. It had three face contenders. It had Seth Rollins, it had Becky Lynch, and it had Kofi. I was watching this show thinking all three can't possibly win, but all three did. But specifically speaking about the Kofi versus Bryan, Kofi was never meant to be in this spot. It was supposed to be Mustafa Ali, but Mustafa Ali unfortunately got injured and Kofi just went through a gauntlet match and then um, Elimination Chamber and his stock just grew and grew and grew. Daniel Bryan at this time, he was the eco-warrior kind of heel champion, which I really enjoyed that gimmick with the hemp championship and all of that. This got so close to him because during his rise, the authority called Daniel Bryan a B-plus player. And during this build, Daniel Bryan referred to Kofi as a B-plus player. So this just had so much inter interwoven storyline that it was just, it was the pinnacle of WrestleMania, probably the best match on that WrestleMania card. And if you can hear a door in the background, it's just my wife getting home. Number seven is Brock Lesnar versus Eddie Guerrero at No Way Out 2004. Now this was the crowning moment for Eddie Guerrero where he finally became champion after such a long road to finally get there. This was truly the underdog story chasing the big bad heel, the big bad monster. Now there was a little bit of shenanigans going on but this just just did not detract from Eddie Guerrero's moment. This was his crowning moment and I was just so happy for Eddie Guerrero. Number six is Cena versus Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam 2013. What is it with jo John Cena and having banger matches at, uh, at almost said at 2013 at SummerSlam? So this was John Cena's hand-picked opponent. He picked Daniel Bryan because he knew he was going to have a good match with him. Now again, as my number nine entry, same with AJ Styles, you put Daniel Bryan in the ring with a chair and he's going to drag out a five-star match. He's just one of those guys that's absolutely always going to bring it. And John Cena did not disappoint in picking him. It was the perfect pick. The big franchise player versus the underdog and this was just a classic match. Number five is the Royal Rumble 1992. It was a championship match. Don't ever forget that. So this was Flair coming in. I believe he came in at number three. Commentary, it's not fair to Flair. Flair just outlasting everybody. There was obviously the shenanigans at the end with Hogan helping um, Flair eliminate Sid, even though Hogan and Sid were both faces at the time. It made no sense. This was a heel move from Hogan, but still. Flair just running the gauntlet and just by the way the reason I put this in it's not just because it's Raw Rumble because there has been another Raw Rumble match that was for a championship it was because it was the 1992 Raw Rumble for my money one of the three best Rumbles ever obviously the 01 
011, uh, 1992, and then I'm also very fond of 2018 Men's Royal Rumble. There's obviously been some other good ones, but those are my top three. So you put the WWE Championship or WWF back then, Championship on the line, and you do it in a Royal Rumble, and it's a status 1992, and you've got the ultimate villain flair running the gauntlet. I'm all for that. Number four is Cena versus Punk Money in the Bank 2011. You all probably knew this was going to be on you. You just didn't know how high or how low it was going to be. So this match had a lot of drama. It had the hottest crowd in a very, very long time. If Cena wins, we riot. And I truly believe that would have been the case. Now, less said about the up. Uh, fallout of this with uh, CM Punk disappearing for what was it 72 seconds and then coming back he should have been gone for a couple of months it would have made the comeback just so much better but the match itself was just absolutely brilliant number three was Brett versus Shawn Michaels Iron Man match at Wrestlemania 12 and this was the first mainstream Iron Man match. So they went 60 minutes. Now, this was one of those where I like my Iron Man matches with a lot of falls. What Brock Lesnar did against Kurt Angle, where he beat him with a chair and then he had the massive advantage throughout the rest of the match, I like that as a tactic. But this one was not about the falls. This one was about two of the best to ever go in a ring, going for 60 minutes and then overtime. And I mean, this is. This is just one of the best matches you can ever... If you want one hour of solid wrestling, put this match on. Number two, and I really debated putting this at number one, it was Cactus Jack versus Triple H at Royal Rumble 2000. Now, you could possibly throw in the Hell in a Cell match as well, but I prefer this one. So I've always... If you know anything about me, you know I'm a huge Mick Foley fan. And that moment... I also watched a fair bit of ECW and a fair bit of WCW back in the day, so I knew exactly who Cactus Jack was. So that moment on stage where Mick Foley told Triple H, yes, I can't beat you, but I know a guy. And then the Cactus Jack and the crowd losing it. Apparently, there were some backstage people being scared that was a bit scared that people in the audience won't know who Cactus Jack was, but they knew, bang, bang, they absolutely knew who Cactus Jack was, and the match did not disappoint. This was a brawl. This took. This was a street fight, but this was one of the most hardcore matches in WWE, not wrestling in WWE history, in my opinion. The thumbtacks, Barbie, everything came to play. And number one is Rock Austin Mania 17. This is the best WWE Championship match there has ever been. The fallout. Besides the point, the match itself, absolutely brilliant. It had everything. It had drama. It had the best video package my way. Yes, it's the best video package WWE has ever done. I know Monster Daniel Bryan is right up there, but my way is the best video package WWE has ever done. It had a red hot Stone Cold. It had a red hot rock. It had Vince McMahon. Now at the end, Stone Cold said numerous times at the end he wanted to call it audible and stun Vince McMahon when he shook his hands, but he didn't. So the, um, Stone Cold became kind of stale with his characters. He wanted to turn heel, but I, nobody wanted to boo Stone Cold. And the call from JR just made the moment. Stone Cold has just sold his soul to the devil. This, hear me, is the best WWE Championship match. If you've not watched Mania X7, their championship match, just don't, don't just watch that. Watch the entire Mania X7 card. It's top to bottom. It's the best pay-per-view, much less the best championship match. There's not an ounce of fat on this entire pay-per-view. That's a hill I'm willing to die on. Guys, if you agree with any of these, let me know in the comment section. Also, do let me know your top 10. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace.